All right, so after you've calculated the basal area for each of your plots, we can go ahead and start filling out this relative frequency, relative dominance, and importance value table. So to calculate relative frequency, that's going to be the total number of each tree species divided by the total number of trees observed per plot. So for example, black gum, we saw five black gum trees out of a total of nine trees. So we would calculate that in Excel by hitting the equal sign, five divided by nine. And what this number tells us is that 56% of the trees in plot one were made up of black gum. Now we can do this for the rest of the tree species here. And it's worth noting that I've included all of the tree species observed among all of the plots, and not each tree species is observed in each of the plots. Uh, so for example, there is no mountain laurel observed in plot one, so we can just put a zero there. We could do the same for pigment hickory, red maple, sycamore. Uh, we did have one tulip poplar, so that would be one divided by nine. And we didn't have any white oak in plot one, so we can just put zero. For chestnut oak, we had um, a total of three out of nine chestnut oaks. So that's equal to three out of nine. Uh, and a good way to double check to make sure that you've calculated the relative frequency correctly is that this, all of these values that you just calculated should add up to, uh, to one. So you can see here, um, I have the sum down here that's equal to one, but if you don't have that, uh, you could do equals sum, open bracket, and select all your data, and close bracket. So we can see that it does equal one. That's just a quick way to double check to make sure that you've calculated each plot correctly. All right, so we have the relative frequency for plot one. Now we're gonna go ahead and calculate the relative dominance. The relative dominance is um, not necessarily related to the amount of trees like we did um, for relative frequency, but now we're concerned with how much space each of those tree species is taking up. That's why we needed to calculate the basal area. So the way that we calculate relative dominance is we go equal sign, sum, open bracket. Now we want to select the basal area for all of the black gum trees. And we're going to divide that by the sum of all of the basal area from all of the trees. All right, so now we can see that uh, the black gum made up about 56% of the trees that we saw in plot one. However, those trees must have been pretty small because they only took up about 1% of the area that all of the trees took up in plot one. Okay, so we'll just fill out the rest of this column here. So chestnut oak, that's gonna be equal to the sum of all the chestnut oak in plot one divided by the sum of all the basal area made up by all the trees in plot one. All right, so the chestnut oak. So we can see that the chestnut oaks made up about 33% of um, the trees observed in plot one. Ha however, those 33% um, of the chestnut oaks made up about 90% of the area of all of the trees. So they must have been pretty big. We didn't have any mountain laurel or pigment hickory or red maple or sycamore in plot one. However, we did have a tulip poplar so again, that's equals the sum of the tulip poplar divided by the sum of all the basal area. And then we didn't have any white oaks. Okay, so now we've calculated the relative frequency and the relative dominance for each of the tree species in plot one. Once you have that information, we can start to calculate the importance value of the tree species in plot one. And that's just the, um, the sum of the relative frequency 
and the relative dominance. So the way you calculate that is just equal sign relative frequency plus the relative dominance for black gum. All right, so now we should be able to drag and drop this formula. Well, no, we can't because, well, maybe we can. Let's see. Did that give us the right values? Just not up. Yep, yes, it did. So now we have um, the relative frequency, the relative dominance, and the importance value uh, for all the tree species in plot one. So why don't you go ahead and take this time to fill this out, fill the rest of these tables out for the rest of the plots. And then we'll come back and we'll uh, make the figures that you need for your forest lab.